outside LSU locker room. Gordy Rush, Jacob Hester, I'm Ronnie Rance. And I'll uh, start with you, Gordy. LSU with a score is 58. Yeah. I should be thrilled, but I'm not. What's going on? Well, LSU was up 31-7. to They were in control of this football game at halftime, and, and they defensively just played undisciplined, really poor football and, and let Ole Miss make this thing more interesting than it should have been. Let me ask you, Jacob, about the defense. You know, the last couple of weeks they've given up some points. They've given up some yardage. Last week folks chalked it up to a great Alabama Tua team. Uh, what happened tonight? Well, throughout the season, we kind of had this crutch of LSU's rush defense being second in the SEC, and they've been playing really well against the run. Yeah, they gave up some pass yards, but now the last two weeks, Najee Harris, you said, okay, well, he's a five-star running back. We'll just throw that out to the side. But now you give up over 600 yards of offense. Most of it comes on the ground for Ole Miss. There's a little bit of cause for concern to get those things right. I mean, Gordy mentioned it. you got to be in your gaps. you got to play assignment football. You can't have missed assignments. LSU had a lot of that tonight. Now you got Arkansas next week. You feel good about any team playing against Arkansas. But when you play Texas A&M and Kellen Mond, they have finally figured out their run game because they really struggled with some injuries early in the season. They've got a guy now. They've got a true freshman in there who's running the football at a really high clip. So now you got to get it fixed for two weeks from now. LSU offensively, Gordy, uh, record night. Uh, we saw a Chase break, uh, you know, single season touchdown record for a receiver. We saw Burrow go over the single season passing yardage. Uh, the beat goes on. Yeah, the beat goes on. And look, Ole Miss was dead last in pass defense coming into this game, and they're going to continue to be dead last in pass defense. Look, offense did everything that you needed them to do. You know, obviously, I think you'd like them to finish some drives there, and, and the two interceptions really uncharacteristic of Joe Burrow. But they hung 58 on the board and you know again I think you got Arkansas coming in it's a chance to rest some people that, that may be dinged up a little bit and make sure that you're healthy for this Texas A&M SEC championship final run. Another 100-yard night for Clyde edwards Elaire, and this past week has kind of been a coronation for Clyde Edwards getting those uh, getting the respect around the country that he's been wanting and deserving a game that like he had a career make game last week against Alabama being a former running back, does that give you the confidence now? Because he looks like he's got a little different swagger. Yeah, it does because people don't do that against Alabama. And regardless of what you think of Alabama's defense, running backs don't have that kind of success. I mean, you can pull numbers from the last 12 years since Nick Saban's been there, and running backs don't have that kind of success. So when you have that success, not only that game, but Georgia last year, Auburn, Florida this year, when the best opponents come and play the Tigers, Clyde has his best game. So now he's got that confidence to know anybody he plays, he can be ready to go. He did it again tonight because a lot of times after your real big game in your career that next one's a little bit of a letdown he comes out here and has a bigger night tonight i want to ask both of you before we go to a tongue of aloha out for the for the year uh there was a lot of dis discussion on whether he was going to start today or not what was your takeaway well uh, you know i'm not i'm nick saban's obviously a much better coach than i ever will be jacob and i were talking about it i, I was surprised that he started with this game you know, first off they would have beaten beating mississippi state with, with uh, the backup quarterback and with Western Carolina, you could have sat him two weeks. You need to beat Auburn. You beat Auburn, Alabama's in the discussion. I was surprised that he played. Again, I'm not there every day. But, uh, you know, I, I, well, first off, two is an incredible competitor. Class act. I hate to see that happen. Hate to see it happen. Reports are it's being compared to the Bo Jackson's injury. And, of course, that ended his career. A final thought from you, Jacob. If Alabama can beat Auburn without Tua, isn't that probably a bigger, better argument for them to get into the playoffs? I mean, with Auburn losing to Georgia, like even their, their best win, I mean, what does that really mean to the committee? Obviously, they don't have a marquee win. I mean, their best win is probably going to be Texas A&M. Texas A&M still has to play this LSU team and Georgia on the road. They could have two more losses on their resume. And so I don't know what Alabama can do. And they, the committee can say it or not, but having Tua Tagovailoa on that squad obviously probably gives them more confidence to put them in the playoff. And, you know, with Mac Jones at quarterback, I don't know that they'll do that. So I don't know what Alabama can do without a lot of help from somebody from the outside. Big night tonight for LSU offensively. They beat the Ole Miss by 21. For Gordy Rush, Jacob Hester, I'm Ronnie Rance. Let's go back to the studio.